I really don't blame any one thing for where we are as a country right now, but I have to say that I'm fascinated by the fact that we don't talk to each other and that we make a lot of assumptions about people that don't think the same exact way that we do. Um, I feel like the conversations I can listen in on um, of young folk or younger folk, I feel like they are doing that. I feel like they are challenging themselves to understand what someone who doesn't believe what they believe, that they are trying to make space for all of those voices. I wanted to listen in and I wanted us all to listen in on how they were forming their political views. Women are key to the American electorate, especially millennial women. We're hearing it everywhere, but what we're not hearing is from them themselves. So I created a docu-series in hopes of letting a group of young women experience situations that would get them talking so we can understand them better. I went around the country interviewing young first-time voters. And in the end, I selected the six most impressive young women. Each of them is a strong, independent thinker with a whole lot to say. My name is Jessica, and I'm from Albany, Georgia, but I live in Atlanta, Georgia. I think usually the whole Republican thing tends to throw people off. I know it did at school. It was four years of, she's a Republican. No. <laughs> My name is Sarah Khan. I'm 22 years old, and I'm from Ann Arbor, Michigan. I was 10 years old when I first started wearing a hijab. I remember actively thinking that I'm Muslim and I'm proud, and I don't want to have to hide that. I think it's hard for people to understand that I can love my faith and my country, because a lot of people see those as contradictions. Feel for how people are before you go into politics. <laughs> then we can get into some things that we might not like as much. I've not been to Philly before. Me either. It's my, my first time. First time. Yeah. I was on the plane and I got here. I was like, in West Philadelphia. <laughs> 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 my name is Kayla Williams. I'm 19 years old. I'm a daughter of a preacher and I'm a kid at heart. I'm a really chill person, like really laid back. So I might not talk a lot, but once you warm up to me, I'm really, really fun. Hey! <laughs> I hope the girls are accepting of that and we can have a good time. Are you excited? Yeah. A powerful DC insider invited us to her prestigious DNC Week luncheon, celebrating the political voices of prominent black women. I feel like it's gonna be like, look at how awesome the DNC is. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, Which is fine, <laughs> um, but I'm I'm just curious like about what they would talk about. Yeah, I'm a, and, yeah, yeah. Just generally a bit cynical of the DNC in general. Maybe Hillary might show up. Has she done anything at the convention so far? I mean, I Other seen. than give private interviews. I'm a Republican, but I come from a long line of Democrats. When my parents first got married and they lived in D.C., they both worked at the Pentagon. They moved to Albany right when Clinton was elected. That's why I think they're probably secret Republicans. I mean, she's probably expected to speak the last day. Her acceptance speech. Yeah. Which hopefully will not be as long as Donald Trump's. That was <laughs> the longest thing I've ever watched. Yeah. I like kept flipping channels, and I was just like, is he done? <laughs> nope. <laughs> OK, let's switch over. <laughs> I only have to defend the fact that I'm Republican when people know that I'm Republican. If we're talking about something political or someone throws out a name, subconsciously I'll just make a face. You know, someone says Bernie Sanders, ugh, yucky. <laughs> I watched the whole thing. I couldn't, I couldn't watch the whole thing. It was a little difficult wow. to watch. The Color Girls Luncheon is hosted by a group of extremely powerful black women in politics. Attending one of these luncheons is a rare opportunity. Just before we head upstairs, the fourth party girl arrives. My name is Kayla James. I'm from West Palm Beach, Florida, and I'm 19 years old. I go to school at the illustrious Howard University, and I'm a political science major. Oh my gosh, I'm a I'm a Democrat, a proud Democrat, and I like Hillary Clinton. Hi! Hey. I think what makes Republicans so bad are things that I just see as like discrepancies, like being pro-life, but then being pro-death penalty. Can't, nope, not with it. This is exciting. I'm yeah. The colored girls are comprised of Dino Brazil, Mignon Moore, 
Leah Daughtry, Yolanda Caraway, and Tina Flernoy. Donna Brazil is someone I used to watch with my parents growing up on Sunday mornings. She's like one of the political figures I wanted to be, you know, someone who had that kind of presence. What you have to understand is for us colored girls isn't about being colored, and it's not even about being girls. It is about a value system that guides our life and our work and our friendship. It's about giving back, understanding where we all came from, who taught us, who raised us, who poured into us, and doing that for somebody else. It's not enough that we rise if we haven't brought others to rise with us. When you get in the pool, you have a responsibility to speak up, to speak out, and to change things. That was really exciting to me. Donna Brazil is just so lovely. The room is just like buzzing. It was a really, really great energy to be around women of color who were empowering each other. Hi, I'm Sara. It's nice, nice to meet you. you. No, baby, you get a real big hug. I'm really surprised and also a little bit worried because in my experience, people of color who are Republican just, I mean, it just doesn't make sense to me. Black girls and brown girls rock. Thank you. Thank you. It's like getting towards the evening and we come upon a protest and there's people that have climbed like light poles and are at the top of the light pole. Big Black Lives Matter signs. There's pro-Palestine activists that are in solidarity with Black Lives Matter. It seemed like kind of a disjointed protest. I'm not even sure everyone was protesting for the same reason. Protesting is not my thing. You know, it's kind of icky and, you know, everyone looks like they just roll out of bed. I kind of feel like I can use my time in more impactful ways than standing there protesting. And I'm really happy to see that this protest was occurring. Are you guys fine? We're just visitors. Okay. I know how hard it is sometimes to be out there talking about Black Lives Matter, I'm talking about pro-choice, Palestinian human rights, police brutality, immigration. And these are all views that may not be popular or accepted by a large portion of this country, but they're views that need to be heard. So as I'm walking away from the protest, I feel kind of emotional and I don't really understand why. I think in that moment, I realized the significance of me being a part of this project. It was kind of like, Sara, you have this platform, you have a camera pointing at you, and you can talk about whatever issues that you care about, and why wouldn't you? The producer gets a phone call and all of a sudden things are moving pretty fast. We actually have the opportunity to go to the Democratic National Convention. I was absolutely excited. Like, I knew even before I got there that it was going to be an amazing experience. Freaked out a little bit, but okay, cool. I wasn't that amped about going. <laughs> if no other DNC, I was gonna be at the DNC this year. Our summer-long slumber party. Two more girls arrive. That's a long time. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Breathe in. Oh. Yeah. 
Oh my gosh. Gets political real quick. Remember but that you were half white. I'm half not white. white. I mean, there's parts of the country where there's no access to clean water. Zidida is the year that women got the right to vote. It's like, what women? Why are we repeating the past and repeating hate? You're saying Mexico, Mexico, Mexico. You want people to demonize Mexicans. It's just pure and simple. Minorities are no longer safe in the United States. 